Here we'll learn about cardiac muscle contraction. As we do so, recognize that the mechanism of cardiac muscle contraction is similar to skeletal muscle contraction, with a few important exceptions. To begin, start a table and denote the following key concepts. Autorhythmicity refers to the fact that pacemaker cells within the sinoatrial SA node of the heart spontaneously depolarize. Neural input is not required, though both neural and hormonal factors can affect the rate of depolarization. Gap junctions between cardiac muscle cells allow depolarization waves to travel rapidly from cell to cell, so the heart contracts as atrial and ventricular units. Recall that in contrast, each skeletal muscle fiber is innervated by a nerve ending. Denote that excitation contraction coupling is the mechanism linking the action potential to myofibril contractions. As we'll show, influx of calcium ions from both the extracellular fluid and sarcoplasmic reticulum are necessary for myofibril contraction. Recall that skeletal muscle EC coupling requires only sarcoplasmic reticulum calcium release. Now let's review the basics of cardiac muscle myofibrils. Because cardiac and skeletal muscle myofibrils are so similar, we recommend reviewing skeletal muscle organization for more details. Write that each myofibril comprises proteins, notably the thick and thin myofilaments, which overlap to form contractile units called sarcomeres. To show a simplified version of this, first draw two Z-discs and show they anchor the thin filaments. In the spaces between the thin filaments, show that the thick filaments extend from the perpendicular M-line. Now indicate that the I-band, also referred to as the light band of the myofibril, comprises the area where there's no overlap between the thick and thin filaments. Think I for light. The area where thick and thin filaments do overlap creates the A-band, also referred to as the dark band. Think A for dark. Finally, indicate that the sarcomere spans from Z-disc to Z-disc. The sarcomere is the functional contractile unit of the myofibrils. As in skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle contraction requires binding of the thin and thick filaments and cross-bridge cycling to shorten the sarcomere and create muscle tension. So let's review the basics of the thin and thick filaments. Start with the thick filament, which features the protein myosin. In our simplified version, label the head with the actin binding site and the tail. During contraction, the myosin heads bind with actin to form cross bridges. For more on cross bridge cycling, see skeletal muscle contraction. Next, draw the three key proteins of the thin filaments. The primary protein is actin, which comprises multiple polypeptide subunits called globular actin, arranged in a double helix. Indicate their myosin binding sites. Then show two regulatory proteins associated with actin. Tropomyosin strands wrap around the actin molecules and in a relaxed state cover their myosin binding sites. Troponin is a three polypeptide complex. Indicate that one of the polypeptides serves as a calcium binding site. To summarize the relationship between calcium and cross bridge cycling, write that troponin binds intracellular calcium causing tropomyosin movement and exposure of the myosin binding sites, allowing myosin-actin binding and cross-bridge cycling to shorten the sarcomeres. Contraction via the sliding filament mechanism occurs as in skeletal muscle, which is discussed in detail elsewhere. Next, let's see how excitation-contraction coupling links the action potential to sarcomere shortening and therefore cardiac muscle contraction. Write that excitation contraction coupling in cardiac muscle cells relies on calcium induced calcium release. Now set up the diagram of a cardiac muscle cell. We'll show events leading to contraction on the left and events leading to relaxation on the right. Draw the sarcolemma with an invaginating T tubule. Show an L type calcium channel in the membrane of the T tubule. Indicate extracellular fluid outside and intracellular fluid inside. Show calcium in the extracellular fluid. Within the cell represent the sarcoplasmic reticulum, 
which is a membrane-bound organelle analogous to the endoplasmic reticulum found in non-striated cells. On the left, indicate that the sarcoplasmic reticulum stores calcium and show a ryanidine receptor calcium release channel passing through its membrane. On the right, show a sarcoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase, also referred to as a circa, passing through the sarcoplasmic reticulum membrane. Show a sodium calcium exchanger at the sarcolemma. Now we're ready to show the steps of EC coupling. First, an action potential is generated, typically by pacemaker cells in the sinoatrial node, and is then transferred from cell to cell via gap junctions. As the action potential travels along the sarcolemma, it triggers the opening of the voltage-gated L-type calcium channels. Show that this allows calcium to move down its electrochemical gradient into the cell. Calcium influx opens the ryanidine receptors on the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and large quantities of calcium ions move into the intracellular fluid. Indicate that the calcium-induced calcium release creates a calcium spark, which amplifies the calcium signal. Then, as we learned earlier, calcium binds troponin and ultimately allows cross-bridge cycling and sarcomere shortening to contract the myocardial cells. Of course, muscle cells cannot be in a state of constant contraction. Calcium influx ends when the channels close, but we also need to remove the calcium already present in the intracellular fluid. Show that this is achieved by the continuous action of the circa and sodium calcium exchangers, which move calcium into the sarcoplasmic reticulum and extracellular space, respectively. More specifically, the sodium calcium exchanger exchanges three sodium ions for a single calcium. The sodium is then pumped out of the cell via the sodium-potassium ATPase. We elect not to show this here for simplicity. As a result of reduced intracellular stores and troponin's release of calcium, cross-bridge cycling stops and the sarcomere relaxes. Finally, as a clinical correlation, let's consider the role of calcium in determining contractility. Denote that contractility, also referred to as ionotropism, refers to the intrinsic ability of cardiac muscle cells to produce force at a given cell length. Contractility can be increased or decreased by various factors, including availability of calcium. For example, cardiac glycosides, which are derived from the digitalis plant, raise intracellular calcium concentrations and therefore increase contractility. Thus, cardiac glycosides are prescribed for heart failure. On the other hand, calcium channel blockers block the L-type calcium channels and prohibit calcium influx, and therefore reduce contractility. They're prescribed as a treatment for hypertension, angina, and some arrhythmias. This concludes our diagram.